Okay, in this video we want to look at the notion of an isomorphism between two groups and some examples. So let's say we've got two groups, G, and let's say our operation is this dot, and another one, H, and the operation is this circle, although often we won't write those, we'll just write the kind of elements next to each other. So these two groups are said to be isomorphic if there is a bijection, so remember that's a function that's one-to-one -one and onto, in other words, injective and surjective, such that if we apply phi to the product of x and y in g, then we get the same thing as phi of x times phi of y, and notice this product over here is happening in h. So in other words, this function is somehow compatible with the group operations on either side. Okay, and this has got to be true for all x, y, and g. And so in that case, phi is called an isomorphism. Okay, so let's look at some examples. So the first one we want to look at is uh, Z2, and our addition is addition modulo 2, and then maybe the set containing only the numbers plus and minus 1, and let's say our operation there is multiplication. Okay, good. So maybe uh, we need to define some sort of map. So let's take Z2 to this plus minus 1. So we know Z2 has two elements. It has 0 and 1. And this has two elements. It has uh, plus 1 and negative 1. So it stands to reason that we should probably take the identity on the left-hand side to the identity on the right-hand side. So 0 is the identity on the left, and 1 is the identity on the right. We'll actually prove that we have to do that later. And then 1, which is the generator on the left, is sent to negative 1, which is the generator on the right. Okay, good. So now uh, let's make sure that this is an isomorphism. So we need to do phi of 0 plus 0. So notice that's going to be phi of 0, which is equal to 1, which is the same thing as 1 times 1, which is the same thing as phi of 0 times phi of 0. Okay, good. And now we've got three more things to check, or actually only two more things to check because this is an abelian group, a commutative group. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's do phi of 0 plus 1. So notice that's going to be phi of 1. Given the fact that we have addition over on this side, we're doing addition inside there. But now that's going to be equal to negative 1. But notice that's equal to 1 times negative 1. Great. But now that's equal to phi of 0 times phi of 1. So notice the operations uh, kind of factor out of the map. So we've got one more to check. Let's do phi of 1 plus 1. So notice that's the same thing as phi of 0 because we're working modulo 2. 1 plus 1 is 2, but that's equal to 0 mod 2. But now notice that's equal to 1 by our definition of our function, but now that's equal to negative 1 times negative 1, which is equal to uh, phi of 1 times phi of 1. Great. So what that says is that phi is an isomorphism, and that these two groups are isomorphic. And we actually have a notation for that, and that's uh, the following. So we say Z2 is isomorphic to this group um, plus minus 1. So in fact, this is like the additive cyclic group um, of order 2, and this is like the multiplicative cyclic group of order 2. So they're the same. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board, and then we're going to look at two more examples. Okay, so the next thing we want to look at are two groups of real numbers. So we've got the real numbers with just addition, and then we have the positive real numbers with multiplication. Okay, great. So uh, what we'll do here is we want to look for a function, and the function that we'll have is as follows. So we've got r to r plus, so we want to think about a function that turns addition into multiplication. Good, and uh, maybe one you can think about uh, for that would be exponentiation. So let's say phi of x equals e to the x. Okay, good. So now let's make sure that this is one-to-one -one and onto. So let's first check that this is injective. Okay, so that means we want to say uh, phi of x 
equals phi of y, but that means that e to the x equals e to the y. Great, but now what we can do is take the natural log of both sides, and we're going to get x equals y. So that means, yes, this thing is injective. In other words, it's one to one. So the next thing we want to check is this thing surjective. Great. So now let's uh, suppose that um, y is an element of r plus, right? But from our knowledge of calculus, that tells us that the natural log of y is some element from r. Great. And so now if we set x equal to the natural log of y, notice that phi of x equals um, e to the x, which is the same thing as e to the natural log of y, which is y. So we've constructed a pre-image for our element y. Okay, good. Now the next thing we want to show is this compatibility condition between the two operations. Um, so in our last example, we did this with all possible products of our two elements, but that's because we had just a group of order two. We can't do that in this case. So let's take uh, phi of x plus y. So notice in the domain, um, our operation is addition. So we've got phi of x plus y. But notice that's e to the x plus y by the definition of our function. But using exponent rules, that's e to the x, e to the y. But then that's exactly equal to phi of x times phi of y which is uh, this thing that we've just proven. So in other words, uh, these two groups are isomorphic. Okay, good. So I'll clean up the board and we'll do one more example. Okay, so the next example I want to look at is U5 is isomorphic to U10. So let's recall that UN is the group of units modulo N. In other words, it's everything relatively prime to N um, that's bigger than one, so that's bigger than or equal to one and less than or equal to N, and we have modular multiplication. So we can actually just write down the elements here. So U5 is going to be one, two, three, four. And that's because 5 is prime, so we get all of the numbers between 1 and uh, 5, not including 5. And then let's see u10. So we need everything relatively prime to 10. So we can't have even numbers and we can't have the number 5. So we've got 1, 3. We can't have 5 or 6. We have 7. And we also have 9. Okay, good. And so now uh, notice that we also could show that these are cyclic groups. So uh, let's see. I believe that this is equal to the group generated by 3. And so let's check that. Well, so notice 3 is equal to 3 to the 1. Let's see. 3 squared is equal to 9. So 9 is the same thing as 4. So that this is equal to 3 squared. So 3 cubed is going to be 27, but notice 27 is equal to 2, so this is 3 cubed. And then this one is obviously 3 to the 0 or 3 to the 4, either way you do it. So we've got that U5 is actually a cyclic group, and it's generated by the number 3. So the next thing we want to do is show that U10 is a cyclic group. And so we need to find a generator of that as well. And so I think 7 will work in this case. So notice 7 is equal to 7 to the 1. And then 7 squared is equal to 49, which is equal to 9 modulo 10. And then notice 7 cubed is just going to be equal to 9 times 7, which is 63, which is 3 uh, mod 10. So here we could have this is uh, 7 cubed. And then this is going to be 7 to the 0 or uh, 1. Okay, good. So that sets up what our phi will be. So we can take u5 to u10. And then we can look at what happens to all of the elements. But we might as well just write the elements in terms of the exponents of uh, our generator, right? So here we can take uh, 3 to the k, and we can send that to 7, 7 to the k. Great. 
Okay, so now let's make sure that this is uh, one to one and on to. So notice this is going to tell us that one is sent to one, and that's going to be the k equals zero case of this equation. And then we're also going to have a k equals one, a k equals two, and a k equals three case of this equation. So notice the k equals 1 is going to tell us that we send 3 to 7. The k equals 2 tells us that we're going to send 4 to 9. And then the k equals 3 tells us we're going to send 2 to 3. Okay, and then you can check easily just by this chart right here that this is one to one and on to. So every element of the domain is sent to a different element of the codomain, and every element of the codomain is mapped onto. Okay, so we have this as a bijective function. So the next thing we want to show is that uh, this satisfies the group rule on either side. Okay, good. So Let's say we have phi of 3k times 3l, good, but now notice that's equal to phi of uh, 3k plus l, great, but then uh, by our rule that's equal to 7 to the k plus l. Okay, then by exponent rules, that's equal to 7 to the k times 7 to the l. Great, but then that's going to be equal to phi of 3 to the k, phi of 3 to the l. Great, so we've shown that the group rule is preserved. In other words, um, that's the last thing we need to show to show that we have a isomorphism. Okay, so before we wrap this up, I do want to notice that up here, this arithmetic is happening mod four, because we know that three to the four will be equal to one in U5. And then down here, this addition is also happening mod four. And the fact that those two are happening mod 4 is a really important piece of the puzzle in showing that this is an isomorphism. Okay, so another way, maybe a more concrete way we could show that these are isomorphic would be to define this map and then look at the Cayley tables for uh, both of these groups. So I'll leave it to you guys to uh, check that way.